Hey, I'm JD and welcome to my channel. If you want to contact me, contact me at jdwatchservice at gmail.com. jdwatchservice at gmail.com. I'm slowing down for the summer, but come the fall or the winter, I may be taking more orders for watch repair. So today's very quick video, that's probably longer than I thought, uh, is on measuring for a watch crystal. I'll have a little chat about watch crystals too, as well as just as measuring for a watch crystal. So just to check here, I've got a gray beard this morning. Well, this is to get respect out there in YouTube for a guy that might know things because of wisdom, right? So this is my wisdom beard, although I'm probably going to shave it off tonight. Um, anyway, and I got sunglasses on here because it's summertime, or at least I think it is. And I've had to go out and uh, do some summertime stuff. Anyway, like change the tires on your car so i did it on all eight tires on two cars the suv was a pain in the butt because i had to put a board under to get the uh three ton lift to jack that suv up and what a pain that was i'm still sore from that and i did that yesterday so so we'll start this uh, video on and i won't do any magic tricks this time i promise or do i promise that was a quick magic trick anyway so I want to talk about um, measuring uh, for a new watch crystal. So there's different types of crystals out there. There are solid glass crystals, um, and they've got 0.0, .0 flexibility, okay? So you cannot bend a glass crystal to fit into and conform to the edge here in the bezel for a crystal. Then there's a plastic uh, crystals. I'll, I'll just say plastic because there's different materials are made of, but fundamentally it's a plastic. Um, they call acrylic and stuff like that and those are more common those crystals than uh, than you'd think and I'm going to grab a couple here All right, here's a bunch of crystal failures. I call them right so they're going to run you probably with shipping about 18 bucks per crystal So it's not cheap to buy a crystal. So you got to size it correctly. So this crystal here it says it's a Stein Krutz crystal uh, mono cave uh, all kinds of stuff in here. Mon Monconomcum Cave. Uh, Micon Cave. Yeah. Anyway. Few domed. I think that's lightly domed by few domed. Waterproof. Well, of course, it's waterproof. It's only waterproof from the edges inside because it depends on how you seal it in. But if I look at that crystal, it says 428 here, which means that's 42.8 millimeters. Now, when I'm talking... 42.8 millimeters. I'm going to use my fancy pointer here. That means it's 42.8 millimeters from the inner edge of this crystal straight across the diameter to the other side, right? And when you're measuring this crystal, it's like measure five times, cut once when you're, when you're doing woodworking. Measure more than once. So, and I'll, sh I'll tell you the situation I've had recently. So, you measured across here at the diameter, then measured again, you know, take about 30 degrees or whatever, measure it there. Or if you want to do it, like measure 12 o'clock, measure 2 o'clock, measure 4 o'clock, and measure 6 o'clock. And I'm always going off slightly. Measure at 8 o'clock, and then measure at 10 o'clock. If all those measurements are exactly the same, um, then your bezel is actually round. It hasn't been warped or anything like that. And you've got a measurement. So if my measurement uh, here was 42.8 millimeters across uh, here, then what you want to do is buy a 43 millimeter crystal. Because if it's acrylic like this one is, right, it's going to bend, right? It's going to bend when you press this in, and then it's going to snug up along the edge where this lip is. If you if you buy a crystal that's exactly 40, 428, if it's 428 across here and you're and you're buying a crystal that's 42.8, it'll just sit there and it won't snap into position. Although you're going to glue it, and the glue might hold it in place, but you you usually can't buy crystals in increments more than two. So so it would be 42.8 and 43 would be the next one. There are some suppliers who will provide a crystal that's one more increment up. But 40, 43 would be the right size for this. So, like I said, I won't take this crystal out, but your tip, uh, maybe I will. Here we go. So, if I bring this crystal out, as you look at this crystal on the side here, this crystal is, and my fingernails are trimmed for guitar, okay? So, stop complaining. So, this crystal is perfectly fit for a, it's got a low dome, 
which means I could put it on an open face pocket watch like this. And the dome is there so that the crystal is not in the way of the hands. Because if this pipe, which is in, in fact um, the uh, hour gear, right? This is the hour gear, the, the, high, the larger one. If this is coming up and, and you end up, um, you get the hour gear and the minute gear, I guess. So the minute gear would be the higher one when this is put together. So if your crystal goes on here and this is touching the hands and obviously it's not going to turn around. So it's not going to fit properly. So, so this actually is too big for this particular uh, watch, but that's why this crystal is like this. Then you get crystals that are, that have a little bit more of an edge like this one here that is still domed, right? But it's got a bigger edge on it and it just depends on the watch you're putting it on, right? So if you're putting it on a, wa a pocket watch, um, I'll grab a pocket watch here. This is one I've been working on. If you're putting it on a pocket watch like this, it might look fine domed up like that, or it might be just too exaggerated. The dome might make make, make this watch look stupid. So, and typically these old watches would have had a glass crystal on it. This specific watch here that's just started to decide to tick away, if you look at this sideways, I've put a flat crystal on here because it actually looks pretty good and there's enough real estate between the the bottom of this crystal and the minute the minute wheel that would be coming up or the cannon pinion I'll say that's coming up right there's enough uh, room between that and, and that cannon pinion coming up that it doesn't interfere with the movement of the hands whatsoever so so the flat one works perfect um, sometimes you end up getting a watch I'll grab another one here this is a very old 1800s watch and you can see that this is a thick uh, glass I can tell if they're glass or they're um, or they're acrylic just by tapping them. You can you can hear the difference, right? Um, and this one here is slightly domed, right? And it's pretty thick. And I've glued this one in, and it looks pretty darn good on this watch, right? So this watch is is done. It's finished. It's been fixed and ready to go, ready to return. So that's that's a dome crystal. And then I've got another watch here. Just reach over. My various pocket watches are on my desk. This one here is slightly domed as well, right? So this crystal is slightly domed. Again, it doesn't interfere with the uh, the actual. It's ticking away. Look at that. It doesn't interfere with the actual. Uh, the crystal doesn't interfere with the hands because you don't want it touching the hands. And if you look at the hands in a pocket watch, watch the minute hand typically curls in a little bit, right? It has a ever so slight curl. Did I just crack my fingernail? No. If I crack my fingernail, I get don't get to pluck on my guitar for a while. I have to trim it down to zero and just use a pick. Anyway, I got distracted. Anyway, yeah, though, so you don't, anyway, the, the story, anyway, 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 is that you want it domed just enough to clear. It has to look good, look appropriate for the watch. Your acrylic crystals are probably easier uh, to deal with and get a hold of. If it's a glass crystal, you're going to put this crystal in at the exact measurement of this distance here. So like I said before, if you're measuring at the 12 across, the two across, the four across, the six across. I'm telling you, take all, take all those measurements. I may, it may, you may think it's an extreme thing to do, but I'll explain something to you in a second. So this is a more of a dome crystal, as you can see. So this crystal actually cracked on the side and I had to replace that. So I've replaced this crystal because it looked shitty. So, and I think that this came from this watch here. Um, so this was a, what I call a shitty crystal because it was all cracked and stuff. Had to do something about it. Couldn't let this go without fixing the problem, right? And as you can see, I've got all these random crystals here. I'll put this one back. I order crystals. I can get them. I'm up in Canada. Canada, as you Americans call it. Um, and I could have been an American, but I couldn't afford to get across the border. This is a 43.2, right, crystal. And few domed as well. So this is a low, lower dome crystal. Uh, this one here is a, an extra down or something, extra done crystal. And it is, what's the side of that? It says 40.4 crystal, right? 40.4. I got all kinds of crystals here, right? I have a collection of glass crystals too that are pretty handy sometimes and sometimes accidentally fit. So there's one there that's also pretty thin. And this could be used in a hunter watch, which is pretty handy. So, if, so. And I'll get to that in a second. There's a 44, and I think this one has got a pretty sizable dome on it, even though it says few domed. Um, if I look at this one here, this has got a pretty big dome on it. So that lip then would fit into the edge here, 
and you would be in your in your crystal fitting device, your crystal press, it would be pushing down on the on the center like this, and it would be coming in on the sides, right? And then you would fit the bezel over the top and that would dome it in there. So but I'm not going to show you that technique. That's another another video and you can look that up because I think I've got another video on how to how to put a crystal in. I've done it a few times. So but the tricky part here is actually ordering the right type crystal. So if you've got, this one is an, a 43.2 extra down, right? So did I have a 42.8 here. I've got a 43.2 here. Same brand, right? But this one says extra down. So there it is there. And this is sometimes when I've had to replace a crystal on a, on a pocket watch. And, and by golly, for some reason it didn't fit. I hate those failures, right? Most of this stuff I did earlier in my career um, in watchmaking. Uh, I don't make those mistakes much anymore. Uh, but sometimes the crystal isn't exactly the size you thought it was. So I keep these ones all bundled up here. Now in my storage, I got like multitudes of glass crystals, like tons of them, right? And they're marked slightly different. Let me get one of those just to show you. I love that saying, few domed. <laughs> That's funny. So these are all grass crystals and they're from Jane. So I ordered that from from another time, which is a good store, by the way. So these are all glass crystals. So when I looked at this, I keep them. It came kind of like this in a box, a box. And um, they're basically all individually wrapped, but I want to unwrap all these. But they're crystals that look like this. So these are the size crystals. And let me just grab one of these. And these are all glass. So they're, you got to be real careful working with these ones here. So they're, there's what they look like. And they're glass crystals. And the size is, uh, this is set 18, 7 sixteenths. So that says 18 and 7 sixteenths. That's milli millimeters, I guess, or I don't think it's actually millimeters because if it was millimeters, it would be uh, bigger. I think that's some other measurement, European measurement, because I looked at these and, and the 18 and 7 eighths or 7 sixteenths is also not inches, obviously. So 1.8 inches maybe? And seven sixteenths of an inch? Not sure. You guys can write me and tell me what these measurements are, but they're all the European crystals are like that. And I have what one would say boatloads of these crystals that I've bought over the years. And I, I'm always looking for more parts and supplies, right? So I've got these crystals here. Let me see if I can open this other bag and it's got more crystals in it. So I've got that. They're not magnetic either, so I'm not worried about putting them near my iPhone. I've got these crystals here, which are, if I, if I look at some of these crystals, look at these. These are different type crystals. They're, they're square. So I've got a ton of these. i got a whole box of Bulova crystals, by the way. Um, and these here are all glass, right? And these federal Bulova. So these are Bulova crystals. And these crystals would go into a movement. I'm trying to, I'm looking around desperately to find my movement here. See, a movement can be something other than you put something you put in the toilet. It can be a watch movement. Oh, there it is. So this watch here, right, as you can see, it's a beautiful watch. I'm going to zoom in on this little watch here. Zoom, look at that. Zoom! Scaring the crap out of you with my zooming, right? So I wound this earlier. Let me just see if I can get a close-up. Berg, 17 jewels, shockproof, beautiful little gold watch. And I fix this. Got her running again, and I'm actually thinking of putting this crazy thing on a NATO strap. So I think I just picked my nose in public. So let me get the NATO strap out here. There we go. So there's the NATO strap. I'm thinking of putting this on a NATO strap. But if you look at this, these crystals, what you're doing is there's the NATO strap. Thing of beauty, right? It might look good on a NATO strap. I'm not sure. So if you look at that with a NATO strap, it's kind of an old watch on a new strap. I'm gonna try that later because it could be pretty cool. Anyway, so these crystals here then, when you size this on a square watch, right, often you end up having to file this on the side, right? So these, these are, I believe they're glass. They might be acrylic actually. Hard to say, I think they are glass. But they might be acrylic. It doesn't say on here. Anyway, you do have to size these things. So this says 23.0 here, and I bet you that's 23.0 millimeters across, right? It would have, and it has 23.0, 23.0 millimeters this way, and it has 
close up so you can see it 23.0 millimeters and 20.3 millimeters so that's the distance this way and that makes sense by the way from a millimeters perspective right um, and this way so I've placed these in nor old older men's watches or a lot of ladies watches and you do have to glue these in and sometimes because of the corners you have to file it and do all kinds of work to fit that crystal in and I just happened to get a boatload of these uh, in the mail and I because I occasionally will do a watch um, that that isn't like the rest of them and there's another one and another one and I'm not sure what this is but this is this is a accutating stopwatch Elgin 7 Jewel parked packed lever or something. What is this saying? It's a lever. That's a lever. A lever in the crystal bag. So that's, uh, those are more crystals I have, right? And so I've done that for some friends. I've done their mother's, great grandmother's watch and stuff. And I'll end up dipping into some of the other crystals I have. And like I told you, I have a whole thing of crystals bull of a crystals then if you look in this pile here and I just zoom out I've got even more crystals so these are all crystals that are packed again these are glass flat crystals so these aren't domed at all so I couldn't use these ones because they're not domed this one is domed so every now and then you get lucky and you get a domed one right I couldn't use these um, in a hunter watch because they're too thick this one is very thick this one's thick so i'd have to hunt for a very thin watch crystal there's piles of them here piles i'm telling you and they're all different sizes and i'd have to find a very thin one that's slightly domed to put into a hunter pocket watch so these are glass crystals so in this business here where you've got these are all just stacked in here you're hunting and fitting and hunting and fitting so you're it's a long job to find a, an existing crystal if you're not just measuring it and buying it. So it's the old hunting and fitting job. So it's a pain in the Batinsky to do that. Now back to my problem at hand. So what I do to do this stuff is get yourself a micrometer, a digital micrometer. And what I do is I take the battery out of the micrometer when it's not used because the battery over time will go bad and ruin the inside of that micrometer so it'll ruin that in, in there so just you're only using a micrometer temporarily just put a rubber band on the back of it because you're never going to measure it to this distance anyway and throw that in and then when you need to use the micrometer you can throw the battery in like this right and there we go oop it's on and then you can put the this on again so I keep getting text messages bing bing so put the micrometer in Hit the on and off just for the heck of it, and then hit zero eyes. Zero eyes. Now, the micrometer's got two jaws on it, right? It's got jaw number one and jaw number two. This is not the right jaw to measure the inside diameter. This is the jaw, as you can see, as I open this up. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna measure this here for a second. Let me just get it in the right way so you guys can see this. There it is there. But I tilt this micrometer, and then I just measure to the edge, like that. And then I want the inside measurement. So, so I've got my inside measurement here. And now I can just look at it quickly. And it says 41.6, right? Then you want to measure twice, cut once, right? So or measure five times and order once. So now you go back to this. I zeroize it again, right? So make sure it's zeroized like that. Turn the watch, right? Go to the 10 o'clock. As I said, you just go half a step and measure it again. And I'm just going here to measure it. I should put my other glasses on because I can't see. And 41 point, what the heck was it anyway? I can't remember. 40 something point something. Anyway, 40.6. Look at that. I measured again, 40.6. So I just keep doing this, close it up, zeroize it, start again. And the reason I do that is there might be an inconsistency. So when I do that, start again, and I measure it again. I better be getting 40.6 again. So in this case here, let me just put this inside the lip here. And I'm getting uh, 40.8. Look at that. 41.8. So something's wrong there. So let me zeroize that again. And then pull this out. And then measure the edge. 
like that, and I'm getting, it was 41.6 a second ago. But it's 41.9. So, and when I was measuring this way, as you saw a few seconds ago, it's 41.6. So this one is actually extruded out a bit, right? It's a cheap watch, by the way, but that's probably the reason why. 41.8. Well, I had 41.9 at the edge. So if I were ordering a crystal for this, um, and 41.9 versus 41.6, so I think my round crystal would have a problem in this watch, right? So I might be better off getting a glass crystal and then shaving a little bit bigger, 41.9, and then shaving it down to fit, to conform, as opposed to getting a plastic crystal. So my big, I can hear the garage door open, that means my wife is here. So I may have to pause for a second to address wifey issues. So here I go. Um, I'll just close the door and then she won't come in because she'll think, oh, he's making a movie. All right, so this watch here is a domed pocket watch, right? And I had just repaired this pocket watch. So I have a crystal. I think I got a crystal sitting there. Yeah, there's just a crystal just sitting on top. Actually, there's nothing on this thing. It's just so beautiful that I didn't even need a crystal. So the problem with this watch here is that the, that's my ring alarm system. The problem with that this watch here is that if you measure from here to here, it's one measurement. And then if you measure from here to here, it's longer. And I, I realized that because I bought a crystal for this watch. And I thought this is going to be perfect because I just did, I was stupid. And I did the one measurement, I believe. And I thought, well, it's got to be round, right? Wrong. So I bought the one crystal and it has to be a flattened crystal. And the reason why this has to be only slightly domed is that when you put this on the watch like that, and you close the lid like this the lid won't close if this watch crystal is too th is too thick or domed too much so this watch crystal although it looks beautiful in here is first of all touching the center of this th the uh, the center wheel or the center pinion or pivot or whatever it's called um, it's actually touching the tip of the minute wheel here and and it's also not the right size it's too small one way and it's too it's just right one way and too small the other way so so when I measured I say what the heck is going on here and I got my my good old C1A1 micrometer out to have a boo at this thing and I ordered two crystals that's 18 bucks each times two and I'm going to eat the price of that by the way because it was my mistake so and that's to this is if Andy's watching this video and hopefully he is he realizes that because this was my mistake but not knowing how difficult this thing was to fit and that's probably why he, it came without a crystal because the last guy probably said guess what this friggin bezel is not round so and i checked all the edges on the inside of the bezel to see if maybe the edges were pushing it out so so when i look at this here and i try to measure it right and i go on the inside and just zeroize this again right and i go like this and I hook it, I got the camera pointing the wrong way, but let me just hook this on the ins inside edge here, and then inside edge here, like that. I get 41.6 is what I'm getting, right? Which is, okay, that's 41.6, but if I take the same 41.6 that I got, and let me just move this back again, right? Zeroize it, it zeroize, pull it back again, is the simplest way to do it and I haven't never failed that much at crystal installation so it's 41.6 and this one is 42 so that's a pretty significant change 41.6 to 42 is very significant so no crystal I order no acrylic crystal I order will fit in this bezel period so there's not much of a solution I have here so a crystal would actually have to be custom fit into this watch because no crystal would fit. Just notice that the tip of the uh, minute wheel was, was low. There we go. So no crystal is going to fit into this watch, right? Let me wind this thing because I did a great job cleaning it. 
cleaning it and fixing it and polishing it and doing everything else. So there we go there. So, so no crystal is going to fit into this. So a glass crystal would have to be custom fit into this watch. You cannot order a crystal that's round, glass, or acrylic, plastic acrylic, and fit it because the bezel is not allowing for that. For some reason, it's longer and narrower in this way. And I don't know why. I actually don't know why. And this bezel is snapped in. It's completely snapped in nicely. So there's no extra room on one side because it wasn't snapped in one way or any of that kind of stuff, right? It is perfectly snapped in. So there's no solution I can do because I can't custom fit a crystal. I'm not that smart. I, I don't do that. So make sure you measure the heck out of your crystal and do like I said, your bezel, and do like I said and go 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock, and then do another 12 o'clock, like 6 o'clock, just to make sure that your crystal size is perfectly accurate. And that's how you do it. Pressing it in is another whole topic, but you can order the crystals and they come in those sizes. I Most of the places have units in millimeters are point, point 0.2, point 0.4, point 0.6, point 0.8. So you measure it across and go one step up from whatever you measure. So if I measure a, a 42.1, I'll, I'll order a 42.4. Because that'll be just enough for this thing to bend into place and snap into the bezel, right? If you don't order a one step up or like, it's just going to be sitting on that edge. And there is a chance it's slightly off on the diagonal. And then it won't work at all. This is more than slightly off on the diagonal. And because it's a hunter configuration, right? Because it's a hunter, I can't have a big warp on the top to, to actually make up for the, the diameters being so different, right? So I can't actually bump it up because then the lid won't close. So I got double the problem. So, so I'm sure when this was first, first came out in like 1890, there were no issues. But there are now, folks. And, uh, and actually talking to, uh, to Andy about this, he said he was disappointed. And just a just a word, never use the word disappointed with me after I've done 20 hours of work and I'm not going to get paid much. Never say you're disappointed in my work because I usually put in, you know, 10 to 20 hours worth of work on a pocket watch and I end up getting 300 bucks for it. So I'm getting Tim Horton wages here, folks. So that's just a warning next time. So a shot across the bow that you're disappointed. Now you're not disappointed. The watch is now working and it wasn't working before. And I actually had to replace the uh, the balance cock on this watch was effed up. And I had to replace the balance cock and I got it timed nicely so it's working perfectly. So this is an acceptable pocket watch and it does have a cover to protect the hands. Just don't rub in them. And you can get it custom fit but it's going to cost you 300 bucks to get it custom fit for a uh, for a, for a, uh, a pocket watch. It's not worth it. You might as well just get another buy another watch and pretend it was your great grandfather's watch. So anyway, that's it for the uh, video today. hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, just send me the questions and I'll answer them. Um, I went over this pretty quickly. Um, there, this does not cover watch watches because uh, there are, uh, I've ordered crystals for watch watches and pressed them in and pressing in crystals is a whole other topic. If you want me to do a specific video on pressing in an acrylic crystal, I'll do the video. I'll also uh, do another plug for GS supplies. If you're out there GS and you want to give me all kinds of free stuff, this is a GS precision applicator, and this is the glue I use, and this stuff is gold, Jerry. It's gold. This is excellent glue. I use it for all sorts of things, but mainly for putting in watch crystals. And as I said in my last video, when I have that applicator, I keep my hand steady, and I move the watch as I apply it, right? And I look, it's like uh, putting a caulking in your bathtub or whatever and you apply it to the angle that you're putting the caulking gun or the tip of the caulking gun and it just does have an angle to it and you just move the watch ever so slowly because this stuff comes out pretty fast once you once you press down on it and you move it ever so slowly and then when you're finished doing that you let it sit for about I'd say two minutes is long enough and then you put the crystal in um, if it's an acrylic crystal you're you're it's upside down in the press you're getting that ready and you're and you're punching it in I've had crystals that I was able to squeeze in without gluing. They stayed in perfectly without any glue. But most of them you got to put glue on. So you move the watch first and then you press it in. Um, I can, a lot of the watches, watch crystals, I can actually press in with just my fingers, right? Because you just take the edge of it and you can actually push it into place without a problem. If it's close to being fit, 
Um, and if it was from the watch, it's usually uh, it's usually not dome that much or not it doesn't have much of a dome from being pressed in. So sometimes I can do that. I put the bezel in first, and then I do that. Put the glue in, and then I put the crystal on top. Or if I if it's an acrylic crystal that's got some dome on it or it needs to be bent a bit to put in, then I take the bezel off of the watch. I would take this bezel. This one here is like one of these types. So it's not even, I can't even take the bezel off this thing. This is a junker, I call it. But you'd take the bezel off the watch normally, and then you'd uh, put the bezel ring in and you press the, press the uh, crystal in. But I'll, sh I'll, I'll do that in another video if you're interested. But this is GS Cement, excellent cement. Use it for your crystals. Trust me, an old guy like me knows stuff like that. See that gray? That's why I've got gray hair, because I know stuff. Thanks.